All right, we're starting algebra now. And if you don't remember algebra, you might want to go back to my Math 8 videos from Chapter 10 to review some of the basic parts of what you learned last year in algebra. You're going to need that to help you do stuff in Section 6.1 and 6.2. I've combined them together. And there's actually going to be three different lessons for this part. The first lesson will be just talking about solving equations with variables on both sides. Okay, So we haven't seen that before until now. So here's an example of something with variables on both sides. See example one here? 2x plus 5. Yeah, there's something on the left. That's a variable. And look, 3x minus 7. Hey, another variable on the right. Same variable, but nonetheless, both on the left and the right. I want to show you with the pictures first, because I think the visual representation helps your understanding. 2x plus 5, that's 2x, those two rods. And then plus 5, 5 little squares. 3x on the right-hand side, 3 of those rods. And then negative 7, that's 7 darkened or red squares. Now, remember the goal here for algebra, when you're doing algebra tiles, is to figure out what 1x is equal to. Notice that there are 3 on the right-hand side and 2 on the left. If I want to just have 1, I can remove 2, or I can remove 2, and then I'm left with 1, right? Cool. That's nice, isn't it? Because I have 1, and then now all that's left over on the left-hand side is those five squares and then we have seven on this side nice but I want the rod by itself so now I have to kind of remove the seven and in order to remove seven I have to have seven of these negative squares on the other side and I don't have them so can you remember the idea of zero pairs so I'm going to draw seven negatives but in order to make this equivalent, I will draw seven positives. So here are my seven zero pairs. Oops, they're all supposed to be positive. And then now I can go ahead and, yes, remove these seven negatives. I can remove these seven negatives. And my last picture here would be my scale with one rod on the right-hand side. That's X. And notice now I have one, two, three, four, five. 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So therefore, x equals to 12. And that's my answer. Now, I don't, you don't want to draw pictures all the time. No worries. So we'll do it by algebra. I'm going to actually do this twice. Okay. The first time, I'm going to actually leave the variable on the right-hand side. And then on the, or the next time I do it, I'm going to leave the variable on the left. And I'm doing this twice because I want to show you that really it doesn't matter which side the variable stays on. You'll still get the same answer if you do things correctly. So using the variable on the right, the goal is to now have x's remain on the right-hand side. So I want to remove the x's on the left-hand side, which means I have to subtract 2x to both sides. So in essence here, in our picture, we took away 2x, we did it to both sides. And what we get now is 5, and then 3x minus 2x is just 1x, so that's 1x minus 7. And then the goal once again is to isolate x, so I don't like this plus 7 here, or minus 7. To remove that, or make it 0, I'm going to add 7 to both sides. And so therefore our answer is x equals to 12. The same answer as what we got with the picture. Whew. Thank goodness. And you're thinking, well, can I just leave the variable on the left? Yeah, you can. In this case, then, I'm going to subtract 3x on both sides. So 2x minus 3x is negative x plus 5 equals to negative 7. Once again, I want to isolate the x, so I'm going to subtract 5 this time on both sides. That's negative x equals to negative 7 minus 5. That's negative 12. This is good, but I don't want to solve for negative x. I want to solve for positive x. So one extra step in this case going to divide both sides by negative 1, so x equals to positive 12. Still the same thing, okay? Either ways, you get the same answer, which is kind of nice, because it's your choice. So, with the next exercises, I'm going to ask you to solve each of the following in whatever way you wish, okay? Uh, I will do it my way, you do it your way, let's see if we get the same answer in the end. Now, by the way, when we do these questions for algebra, we can always double-check our answer by just checking it out, meaning plugging your answer back into the original equation and seeing if the left side equals to the right side. Okay? 
So you try these on your own, and I'll try them too. Go. Okay, so I like to have all the variables on the left side, so I'm going to start by subtracting 3x on both the left and the right. 5x minus 3x is 2x. Still have the plus 12, and now this time on the right hand side now it's equal to 2. Isolate the variable x, which we then have to subtract. 12 on both sides, so 2x equals to 2 minus negative, oh sorry, 2 minus 12, that's negative 10. And finally, I want x by myself, that's 2x, the opposite of 2 times x is dividing. So now if I divide, I get x equals to negative 5. Remember how I said check? We can check. Just plug in negative 5. So 5 times negative 5 plus 12. That's the left hand side. That's on the left side. That's negative 25 plus 12, which is negative 13. The right hand side, 3 times negative 5 plus 2. That's negative 15 plus 2, negative 15. Sweet! They do equal each other. That means x equals to negative 5 works. We'll do the same thing for the next one here, okay? I'm hoping you're doing yours before you copy mine or just double check your answer with mine. Remember, there are many ways to do these questions, so don't have to think I have to follow what I'm doing here. As long as you get the same answer in the end and you check, it should be the same thing. And therefore, you should be happy just like me. Negative 7 minus 3, negative 10. Last step here is to divide both sides by 10. And if you're like, what just happened? You really need to review your algebra skills for math 8. Okay, m equals negative 1. All right, I hope you're feeling good about this. If not, we'll come back to class and we'll do some more. But I'd like you to turn the page and let's see if you can now deal with these examples. Now, in some equations, you'll have variables on both sides. Cool, but there'll be more than one variable. Ah! So, my advice to you is to combine like terms first. We did some of that in chapter 5. So if I look at this 4k minus 2k, I can already combine that. And because they're on the same side, I'm just combining like terms. 4k minus 2k is 2k. And I can combine the numbers 8 and minus 3. That just becomes a positive 5. And I've simplified my left side to 2k plus 5. Do the same thing with the right-hand side. There's only one thing with the k, so that's negative 4k. 8 plus 9, I believe, is 17. And now this looks like a question from the previous page. So once again, now go ahead and solve. I'm going to try to isolate the variable on one side. I think I can add 4k to both sides here. 2k plus 4k is 6k. 6k plus 5 equals 17. This now is a question that we did in grade 8. So we're going to subtract 5. This is a two-step question. So we'll get 6k equals to 12. And then our last step is to have k by itself, so i got to divide both sides by 6, and k equals to 2. Once again, you can plug it back in and check, and confirm that you got the right answer. Okay, last but not least, example 3, we can throw in the brackets. Yes, 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 the brackets. Hope you remember that if an equation has brackets, what do you need to do first? You need to expand and remove the brackets first. So this is where, for example, 3a, that 2 gets distributed into both the terms in the bracket. So 2 times 5k is 10k. 2 times positive 3 is just positive 6. And now you have an equation without brackets. Yay! Let's go ahead and solve it like you did before. Uh, isolate the variable k. We'll subtract 6 on both sides. And then finally, we'll solve for k by dividing both sides by 10. So k equals to 1. Ta-da! And finally, I'd like you to do the last one yourself. The ideas are the same. So I'm going to be quiet. You work on it. Once you're done, come back and play the video again. And let's hope your answer is the same as mine. If it is, yay! If it's not, figure out what you did wrong and try to get the answer. Variable. Solve for x, don't let 
work. Done. Did you get that too? I hope so.